Okay, we are in Atlanta today. I am showing you a door, but the magic that is behind this door, and I don't mean the old thing looking at me right now, <laughs> is the completely fabulous Amy Keys. Hi, Hi Amy, hey, how are you? I'm not eating this time. <laughs> <I'm>... Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So everybody's been so curious about you. It, it, first off, it's been such a great addition having you out here after all the time we spent with Phil and to be back on the road together like this yes. and not in Vegas at the Latin Grammy or the Grammy show. Or I know. Oh, my God. That's right. Yeah, she's, yes. She was my, my driver on, on that one. But we'll get. So just let's talk about your history, where you grew up and what, what, what's your, your joy of music and everything. My history. Oh, well, back in the day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born and grew up partially in Washington, D.C., in and around the DMV. So D.C. and Maryland. Um, let's see, went to school out in Maryland. Uh, goodness. Was always interested in music, but it was always, yes, that's a nice thing when you go over here. Because I mm -hmm. loved sciences and the arts. Mm -hmm. I was an avid painter and drew and... I was just into the arts all along. But I also did sports. So I played on the, um, they had the boys and girls clubs. So we were yeah. state champions. Yes. And so I played basketball, softball, um, tennis, any anything sports wise I was into. Still am actually. Yeah, you work out yeah. on the road all the time. Got to. Yeah, that's that, great. Yeah, and I mean, well, my body is my instrument, so. Yeah. If anything is wrong, like on a piano or a guitar or something, once you've tuned it, middle C is where middle C is, period. Yeah. On this, if she's not in tune, <laughs> I might not know where middle C is until yeah. we get out on stage. And it is not fun trying to find her in the middle of a song, believe me. So the more I can work out, and all you singers out there, that's when they talk about core workout and all that, doing those planks and stuff. The more you work out and the more you concentrate on your core, the easier it is to mm. sing. Your legs may be worn out and you may be <laughs> tired, but your voice will be fine. But fabulous. having the diaphragm and all, the, all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I used to do, I did a show as a segue. I did a show at the Pasadena Playhouse um, called Sisterella. And one of the dancers... Uh, right would teach spinning classes right down the street from the uh, theater. So when we would do those lovely twofers on Saturdays and Sundays where you did a matinee and then an evening show, yeah. in between, we'd go and take his spinning class. Wow. Uh, but if anybody out there who's familiar with spinning classes, if you do it right, when they say lift up out of your seat, you don't lift up with your legs, you lift up with your abs. Oh my God, my legs were killing me. I used to have this high note that I had to hit and sustain while walking up a flight of steps. My legs were done, but I'm like, oh my God, I can hold this note forever now. So it was coming from the right place. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I always, I always try to work out on days that we're, that we have to perform. But back in, so I was always into sports. Um, back east and but then slowly kind of segued into music as a profession because I studied um, biology I have a degree in biology with a minor in chemistry so I was going to go to medical or dental school and I was accepted into dental school and then the itch for music kind of got to me again and I went to the registrar and I said, well, I'm thinking, because I was doing really well, I was doing really well in dental school. And I said, I'm thinking about trying this music thing out and I know I need to do it 100% because if I stay here, this is going to be it. Yeah. So he said, I won't tell you what to do. All I will say is we will be here. I was like, thank you. So I went. And withdrew 
to the chagrin of my parents. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, what you're talking about is the you same know. journey I was on, except a little opposite, because I was sick of the music department and I uh -huh. wanted other things, and I went and took aptitude tests, and my highest aptitudes were in art and science. So no. I changed, yeah, because all they wanted in the music department was to direct us towards teaching. And I had no desire to be a teacher. I wanted right. just to play. Mm -hmm. So, but it's kind of the flip of what, what, you, what you ended up with, very similar to. That's so cool. And there's so many, well, some of the professors that I worked with were saying that there's a serious direct correlation between mathematics and science and music. Mm -hmm. And one of my, one of the, Folks that I, when I finally took music classes way, way, way after college, they were saying, yeah, there's, he said, you see patterns. I, I love to find patterns in things. That's why I love piano so much, I think. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, because it's mathematical and like reading music, sight singing is a mathematical thing. I see patterns and then I see in, the intervals are numbers to me. Yeah. Which is really cool. And I mean, there's like my, again, another segue. I was injured in a car wreck, drunk driver, don't drink and drive. Um, and had to have surgery on my knees because both of my knees hit the, uh, the dashboard, undercarriage under carriage and yeah. the dashboard. So I went on Music Cares through the Grammys and found a doctor. I go into the doctor's office and the first thing I hear, there's rock and roll music playing and I see this massive picture of Jimi Hendrix on the wall. Sign, in the doctor's you know, office. In the doctor's office. Great. And there's CDs being sold and it says all proceeds go to Music Cares. And I was like, okay, this is cool. And he's got basketball players because I told him I want an orthopedic, I want a sports orthopedist because I want somebody whose job it is to say, okay, your knee is blown out. You got to be back on the court next week. Give me a minute. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You're done. That's what I needed. So I found him. It turns out that my orthopedic surgeon used to be a singer with Sha Na Na. Oh, <laughs> Scott Powell. Wow. He was one of the guys in the gold lame. Yeah. Yeah, with the bare chest. And he's wow. got pictures of them. At, and there's one of them at Wolf. At Woodstock. I had no yeah, because they played Woodstock. I had no idea. And I walk into his office and there's like guitars and stuff. And there's this amazing picture of all of them on stage and him and his gold lame oh, at man. Woodstock. That's so Because they've been around a long time at that point. Yeah. Well, he did. And once they finished their careers, once they wound that down, he was well off enough to pay his full ride to go back to school and he became a surgeon. Oh, that's great. And he and his partner were the, I think he's, I think they still are the staff surgeons for the men and women's Olympic volleyball teams. Wow. So, wow. The journeys. I know it's crazy, but wow. science, there again. But he got you in order. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But then I'll segue back. So I was singing and ended up working with a producer in DC who shopped the demo that I did. And Don Grierson, God rest his soul, I love that man forever. He was with Capitol Records at the time and heard it and liked it. And then he was in the process of coming over to Epic CBS. And when he went to Epic CBS, he signed me to my first oh, great. recording contract. And then I got an agent through all of that that was going on and he's like okay you got to make a decision new york or la one of the two dc is not the entertainment capital of the world yeah. so unless you want to be a politician you got to move so i went out tested the waters out in la and i booked a couple of commercials and did some work on a film and got bumped up to being one of the dancers and stuff in um of all things, another 48 hours, the um, oh, yeah. Eddie Murphy movie. So I ended up working with Walter, with freaking Walter Hill. You know, so I was like, okay, the universe is telling me I need to move out here. And it paid for me to move. Yeah. Me and my little Toyota Corolla <laughs> <laughs> that I shipped across because there was no way in four L's I was driving that across yeah. the United States. So went out there and then, of course, 
as most people do when you travel, if you've traveled out to LA after someone says, yes, call me when you come out. <sighs> and I'm pulling out cards, business cards and everything and no calls back, no nothing. So I went from, yay, I'm going to LA to, oh my God, what have I done to F this place? I'm going to go yeah. home. You know? And then finally, one, I remember going home that first Christmas and telling my mom, I was like, you know what? The only reason I'm going back out there is because my car is there. Because if I could, I would tell the people at the apartment that I'm renting to sell everything. Yeah. I will just replace it. I hated it so much. It was just all the glad handing and, hey, here, take my car. Da, 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 da. Yeah, no, that's so much BS. BS. Yeah. But I stuck it out, went out there, and my boyfriend at the time ended up coming out not too long afterwards. He was working as a courier. And I was with Apple One Temp Services. Ooh. So that, oh yes, the glamour. Uh, so that I could pay my bills, but also have control over my schedule. Yeah. So I started doing extra work. That was the first stuff that I started doing when I got out there. And it's like, yeah, don't poo poo. There are no little jobs. Because trust me, I met more people doing little jobs than I did doing a lot of the big ones. Yeah. And I just started meeting people in all of these little spots. Cause I mean, I'm on all the major movie sets. Yeah, it's all about networking. Totally. Yeah. I met more important people playing spades <laughs> backstage yeah. where I might be on, I might be called to set once out of 12 hours. Otherwise, we're sitting back there playing cards, having a good time. And I've met some of my dearest friends through a lot of that stuff. And one thing kind of led to another where I had been, well, I had been in a pageant, let's say, back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet a bunch you of You can folks. talk about your pageant, please, please. It, it's part of your history. No, I think it's wonderful. It's so long ago. I know, oh, but... My God. But I had I had gotten into that, and some some folks knew me knew me from that, and it was weird. I had crossed paths with some people back east, and then didn't think about it anymore. Got out west, and I was just like me and my like I said, me and my then boyfriend, we were hitting every jam session that we could mm -hmm. just to get seen by yeah. people. And everybody's like, why are you going to that place? You're not getting plenty. It's like, because that's how people get to hear and see what you're doing. There could be one person in that place that can change your life. Exactly. And just because you're not getting paid doesn't mean you're not going to get paid. Yeah. And sure enough, there used to be, I don't know if you've ever heard of this place. It was a hole in the wall. Had the best fried chicken in the valley. Scobies. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I used to go up to Scobies and it was like this big and they had jam nights. And one night we went up there and they called me up to sing. I sang and this guy came to me. He said, have you ever done background vocals? I said, oh, sure. So well, I'm going to recommend you to this singer to do these um, songs. Fast forward. I go to this gorgeous house off of Laurel Canyon with this big mansion and walk in, and I'm sitting there talking to this girl, <clears throat> and her name was Deanna Eve. I had just met her and had to excuse myself to go to the loop. I walk in, and there's like a shower stall in there, and there are gold and platinum albums stacked in the shower stall. Wow. I looked and said, The hell? Poison. So I walk back out. And I didn't say anything. I mean, this is a fabulous house. And I sat down and this really sweet guy walks out and goes, hey, I'm Ricky. How you doing? Ricky friggin' Rocket. Yeah. It was Ricky's his really cool. at the time. I adore that man. Yeah. I love him. Still friends. Yeah. She, on the other hand, did some stuff that I will not. You all can look that up on YouTube and yeah. find out about it. But the good thing about her is that that allowed me to meet him, but also she says, oh, I have these two friends who are doing this thing every 
Monday night or something like that called R&B Live. And this was when R&B Live used to be in Century City and was the thing to go to because of all people, like Eddie Murphy came one of the nights that I performed. And Ramon Hervey, who at the time was married to Vanessa Williams, mm -hmm. and uh, Bill Hammond would bring together these amazing people. So Deanna says, oh, you need to meet these guys. You need to go see them. So I go down there and the night that I go to meet them, they've got Herbie Hancock, Joe Sample on keys, Dennis Chambers on drums, Marcus Miller on bass and MD, uh, Dio Saucedo, who's a percussion player for George Benson on percussion. Um, God, who else was in there? I think Phil and Gaines came up and played at one point, and Hamish Stewart was the guest vocalist oh, wow. and played. It was insane. What drove me crazy though was that all the beautiful people back by the bar were oh, no. and I was like, do you guys not see what's on yeah. stage? You're never going to see this. They're thing. only there for the scene. Exactly. But what was cool, that led to me meeting uh, Bill and Ramon and they said, oh, well, we've got next week Al, um, oh my God, Al McKay. Mm-hmm. Al McKay is having his group, he's coming in and he's going to be the main, the lead guy and he needs a background vocalist. So I was like, heck yeah. So I come back and work with him. Fast forward again, we're sitting backstage after we've rehearsed. He said, you know, I was supposed to do some of the songs on your album. I said, like, what? And why did that not happen? So we got into this big yeah. conversation. The next thing I know, he's saying, well, this girl is not going to, she flaked on me and it's not going to go out on tour. I got a tour coming up with LA. His group was called LA All Stars at the time. He said, would you like to do it? Hell yeah. <laughs> so we, I go out on the road with him and the horn section is buying street horns. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. It's like, it's, it's crazy. These that's why divine intervention, I'm sorry, who believes or doesn't, this made no sense yeah. for these things to just come in the exact order they needed to come in. So, But you're open to them, and that's yeah. the thing. If you were to say, no, nah, I don't, I'm going to stay in tonight and watch TV. Totally, totally. Because yeah. I didn't get paid for any of that yeah. stuff. And so we're out on tour, and the final night... Because um, Harry Kim, of course, my darling brother, is the leader of the section. And that's where I met him. Mm -hmm. And they had a different sax player, though, at that point. So Harry told me later, he said, yeah, I watched how you prepared for the gig and all of that. Because I want to know what I'm singing, what everybody else is singing. Yeah. And all. I want to know everything. So in case of emergency, you're ready. So... We get to the final night, and every night they had been asking for reasons. But Philip, of course, was not part of the LA All Stars thing. So we were in Manila, Philippines, and he turned around to me and said, Do you know this song? I was like, Are you kidding? Of course I know this song. So would you sing it? Sure. So I go out, and the sax player comes out, and we do the whole Doo -doo 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 at the end. Yeah. And I sang that to him, but, and Harry had told him, listen to all of this stuff. And he evidently had not. So he go, instead of him going, -da 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 -da, back to me, he goes, and I sang it back to him again, like the recording does. And he did the same thing again. Long story short, he lost the gig, and I kind of gained the gig from yeah. that well, moment. Prep. Prep. You know, if you show up and you're not prepared, they're going to look right over your shoulder to see who else is in the room that could maybe do the job. Hello. And they are right. There's somebody oh, right no. there waiting. They're, they're stuck to your back with a knife. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, Harry, I just kind of left that behind. And, and 
the next thing I know, I get a call from Harry. He said, first thing he said, don't get your hopes up, but I recommended you for this gig. And he said, it's Phil Collins. <laughs> so he says, I'm, and he gave me a list of albums to listen to and material. He said, so put together your demo package and send it in. So I sent him my stuff and I listened to this stuff. As I'm looking through the liner notes, Divine Intervention, Brad Cole's name is on the back of one of the albums. Well, Brad Cole had been the keyboard player on some of the stuff that I had worked on for my album with Epic, because Epic had flown me out to try out producers. And I was working with Rick Chudikoff and Peter Bonetta, mm -hmm. Peter and Cheese. And Brad had played on some of that stuff. So, and so this had happened way before. And I look on him like, holy crap, I know this guy. So Harry recommends me. I reach out to Brad and say, would you recommend me for this? So he writes a little letter of recommendation. And of course, back then, faxes it in. Yeah. And then, oh, and I forgot divine intervention yet again. Right before Harry sent me the recommendation that said that he had um, recommended me, I had been asked by Ramon Hervey and Bill Hammond to go out on a USO tour, an R&B Live USO tour. Guess who one of the lead singers was? Philip Bailey. Come on. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. it's kind of like I, I tell people at times, I said, I live in Los Angeles, but I kind of live in Mayberry. Yes. Because it, the connections are so small and intimate and you turn around and if your eyes are open, you can, I know you, or do you know, and all these things line up so beautifully. And it went click, 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 click. So I'm out with Philip and then Harry calls with this recommendation. So I reach out to Philip. Philip, would you recommend me for this? Oh, sure. So he sends in a recommendation. So I've got these three guys. I've got Harry Kim, Philip Bailey, and Brad Cole sending in recommendations and then I come home one day and then it's like I just kind of put it out of my head because of course the period goes by like when you're waiting to find out if you got a job yeah and you're like oh my god I want this job oh my god I want, oh my god and then it's like no I'm okay yeah it's gonna be what it's gonna be I'm one, I'm one with the universe everything is fine and then after a while I didn't want that gig anyway it's all <laughs> I'm good and then all of a sudden I get this call and my boyfriend is like, oh, my God, you have got to call home and listen to the voice message on your machine. And I'm like, what? He said, Phil Epping Collins called and left a message. I said, well, wow. Amy. And I call back. I still have it. I still yeah. have the recording. I will never erase that. And he said, well, I'd like. And then he went into this whole thing. And he said, well, I really love your, your material, but there's a story that Harry Kim told me later on once I got the gig that Phil had called up my answering machine. And my answering machine is professional. I said, hello, you've reached 818-324, da 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 At the tone, please leave your name, number, and button. And Phil listened to the message and hung up and called Harry and said, are you sure she's right for the <laughs> She sounds quite operatic. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, uh, Harry's like, go ahead. Can she be soulful? Exactly. Yeah. So I told I told him one day, it's like, okay, I was going to change my message to say, at the tone, leave your message. If this is Phil Collins, please press one. Yo, 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 what up, dog? You know, and go into that. Leader 411, baby. Peace. <laughs> And then let him leave his message. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. So he called me and offered me. The when game. was that? Like ninety three or four, somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, ninety three, and then we went out in ninety four. Yeah. But what was deep? I had to meet. He said, "I don't want my since I don't want my background singers pulling out each other's hair. I want you to meet with the other background folks because when I joined, it was only two of us for yeah. like." a few tours is me and Arnold McCullough, yep. my partner in crime, who I love dearly. But at that point, I was terrified of him because he basically was the gatekeeper to me getting this gig. Yeah. So he and I met 
at, and it's gone now. Uh, Jerry's Deli. Yeah, gone. And we met and had the most amazing time. And he had to fax Phil his opinion of me. So I'm sitting on pins and needles, like waiting, 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 waiting. And then it literally a couple of months went by. And then I heard a different sounding British voice on the phone. And it was Tony. Tony, Smith. yeah. And he started talking to me about the contract, offering me the gig. And he says, well, what amount of money were you thinking about? And he's throwing around. And I was like, well, you know, I go into my very thing. It's like, well, I generally will deal with situations like this, with whatever the market will bear. You know, trying to be very pulled up and all of this. And he just cut to the chase. He was like, you were so full of crap. You don't know what's going on, little girl. <laughs> and he puts a number out there. And I was like. Yeah. And I went back on the phone. I think that that would be. That, would be that should fine. be sufficient. Yes. As I get off the phone and I'm like dropping to my knees going, sweet Jesus in the morning. Yeah. And that's how I got. They're a very generous company. Yes. They're really thoughtful with all the artists that work with them. Oh my God. They yeah. were, oh, talk about blessing, 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 yeah. blessing, blessing. And then we went out on tour. God, that tour was about two and a half years. It was called, Bo it was for the Both Sides in support of the Both Sides album. And it was called Both Sides of the World. And we literally went everywhere from Hong Kong to Manila. What's crazy the final show on that tour was on the same stage where I sang Reasons with Al McKay. Wow. And how it started. I mean, it literally. This is a giant circle you came found. completely. Because we walked in, I was like, oh, you guys. It was. And I'm like sitting there, I was bawling like this is insane you guys it literally came completely full circle because that's what got me to that wow. Phil Collins day no because I remember Daryl called me to come down and see him because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be doing that tour mm -hmm. and uh and he said well we're down at this hotel like down on Wilshire or something like that oh, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. said come on down and when I went down there met him in the restaurant and you were there and that was the first time I ever met oh, you oh, was yeah, in, in right. that at the restaurant there and uh I was just going oh, god I wish I was going to be on oh, this tour with you guys well, that so much fun. yeah oh my god but that was that was insane to have just all of those but to have all those things, and all of those things happened from, let's see, I think I went to start dealing with Deanna Eve, I think started in maybe late January, February. All of that stuff that I talked about happened within months. Wow. Just, and in the absolute perfect order that they needed to happen yeah. in for me to end up with Phil Collins. Yeah. So it's like, folk can deny divine intervention, but I've experienced it. Yeah. Because that whole thing. Yeah, it was a makes perfect storm. No sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and thank goodness it did. And just been doing stuff ever since. And, I, and just all kinds of. Because you did Johnny Halliday, you've done yeah. Tears for Fears, you did Joe Cocker. Yeah. I mean, your, your resume is deep. You know, if you if you want to just th throw out your resume a bit here, just Ooh, wow. Well, I guess there's another another cool kind of bizarre happening. Arnold, who of course in my heart has sung with James Taylor since Jesus was a child, yeah, and had a conflict on this because Phil Collins did Tarzan, did the music and everything for Tarzan, so they were having this grand premiere for Disney in New York. He walked into this big ballroom and there's like tigers and lions and all kinds of oh stuff. Oh my. Yeah, oh my. <laughs> and, and, and these are like real things and all over the place. And no one knew we were going to play. They had us in this smoke, like the smoke kind of dissipated and we came out and sang. Well, Bill and Tony were talking about, well, gosh, well, with Arnold not here, how are we going to do? They wanted to do Easy Lover. And Tony said, have Amy sing it. And he was like, oh, okay. So I sang it. 
in the audience that night was Michael Gorfain. Michael Gorfain comes over to me and says, I'd like to introduce you to some people. What are you doing? What are you trying to do? Fast forward, he introduces me to Mike Post. I, and then in turn, Mike has me start doing a bunch of like vocals for different shows. And Stephen Bochco was about to do a TV show called City of Angels. Mm -hmm. He needed a theme song. Mike brought me in. And I, and I hired a bunch of my friends to come in and sing backgrounds on this thing. So we did the theme song for City of Angels. And I've been working with Mike ever since. And then Mike had this super group that he put together with um, Sonny Landreth, uh, Bob, Bob Glob was on bass, yeah. he should have been there. Uh, Bob Glob, JR was on drums, and God rest his soul, that singing, playing man, Mike Finnegan on oh, three God. and singing. Yeah. It was just, it was insane. And Kem Mo, Kem oh, Mo great. was in that band. And we ended up doing one show, because that was when lightning struck twice where we actually played and, and that's gone now the hard rock yeah that used to be no i'm sorry house of blues house of blues is what's gone yeah sunset boulevard and we did a um did a performance there so i worked with them and then from those shows somehow amos newman saw me and amos introduced me to dave stewart <laughs> And I know it's insane. These journeys are so fabulous. <laughs> it's insane. And then through Dave, I worked with Dave on his on a ton of stuff and on his song um songbook, Dave Stewart's songbook mm -hmm. And then through that, we went over to Liverpool when um Liverpool was the European center or something. They 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 dub a European city the city each year. And it was Liverpool, so they had Ringo playing on top of this massive building. I think it was City Hall, and we were his band. So that's wow. where I met him and started working with him. And now I've sung on and done vocal arrangements for him on almost all of his latest pieces. So I've gotten to work with Steve Luke at third, Joe um, Bissonette, all Bissonette, the other. Oh, yeah, Bissonette. Um, gosh. Hamish does that, doesn't he? Do Richard that? Page. Richard Page, yeah, Richard yeah from Page. Mr. Mister. Uh, oh, Timothy B. Smith. And, oh my God, that section. The three of us did a vocal one time. And then um, Luke Ather came in. Luke came in. And uh, Joe Walsh. Yeah. Joe Walsh came in. So, And I did some stuff with Joe Walsh on a project for the guy who owns Madison Square Garden. So Joe gets these design. crazy things. It was insane, but it was great. Yeah. It was great. But through all of that, Larry Klein heard about me, I believe, through Michael Gorfain or Mike Post, and called me in because Tina Turner wanted, was going to be on this Joni Letters project. And she was really nervous about it because that was totally out of her. That style was totally yeah. out of her wheelhouse. So she wanted someone to demo the song for her. So Larry called me in. What's crazy is I had worked with Tina, with Phil, on the, um, she sang the song Great Spirits Brother Bear. Brother Bear. Yeah. Oh my God, she walked into the room with this leather mini skirt and that hair and these boots and this floor length coat. I was like, we are not worthy. Oh, when we when we did that show in New York, yes. when she flew in for that, and I looked back at Phil, and all he was doing was playing drums, and he was the happiest I'd seen oh. him because the way she walked in and took charge of everything, Oof. and heard every piece. Yeah. Oh, who's singing this note? Come in, baby. Who's singing this note? No, no, no. Back up some. I need yeah. less of this. Who's but rhythm guitar? I need less of the da da. She was unbelievable. Oh yeah. my God, it gives me chills thinking about her. Yeah. Now. And remember when she walked off stage, because she was talking about retiring. Yeah. And she walked back on after people, with people screaming for her to come back on stage. And she says, oh, maybe I need to rethink this retirement thing. Yeah. And she sure did, because she went on. God, to rule the world. Decades. So I had worked with her on that. So Larry calls me in, and the song was Edith and the Kingpin. Mm. So... I went in, sang the demo for that, and if you haven't heard 
Tina's version of that. Do yourself a favor, please. Listen to that. That woman's voice. It's like people were, all the comments under the video that I've seen on YouTube is like, oh my God, I didn't realize her voice had all See. of that. See, Go it's kind of like when Joni did the thing with Herbie. Yes. And suddenly you're listening and she sounds like Carmen McRae. And you're like, where did that voice come from? From this high little voice to suddenly this rich. Yes, just well, another thing. Yeah, I, when you hear Tina in that, it's another animal altogether. It was so cool. So I sang that. And this is another segue, another divine intervention. The demo goes to Tina. Tina uses, Tina uses that to sing her part. Herbie's getting ready to go out on the road to do the Joni Lenders tour. I get a call from Herbie Hancock and I go over and meet with him and we're sitting talking in the living room. And he's like, yeah, well, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And I hadn't gotten the gig yet. He got up without a word off of the couch, walked over to his grand piano and started playing the intro to the song. So I was like, okay. I walked over to the piano and joined him and we did the whole song. Mm -hmm. We walked back over to the couch and he said, okay, the tour starts. <laughs> and ba -da, da 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 So I ended up on the Joni Letters tour. That's so great. <laughs> with him, it was him, Vinny on drums, Vinny Caliuto yeah. on drums, um, Chris Potter, on saxophone, Leonella Wakey on guitar, and Dave Holland. Oh, great. Doing up, upright bass. And it was nuts. And I do credit, I credit Phil for honing my performance and being spot on, like just yeah. being meticulous. I credit him. Phil's for amazing. Yes. Phil is the consummate professional. Oh, totally. So I credit him for me being having like just razor sharp vision as far as what a song is doing, what I need to do in that song, what I don't need to do in that song, and how how to perform in that type of music, like pop, rock, whatever. Herbie, on the other hand, I walked in the first day for rehearsal, and I was in that, my, that mindset from doing the Phil Collins tours. So my thing was learn the song the way it is and come in and be able to boom, boom, boom. Play it. So that's what I did. I sang because Christina Aguilera had done a song for you on the Possibilities album. And that was going to be one of the songs mm -hmm. I had to do. So I came in. It was the first song. So I got up and started singing. First thing when I walked in the room and I saw that compliment of that musician, lineup. Yeah, I was like, one of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. <laughs> it's totally set to my Sesame Street people. Um, and then I said, okay. Take a deep breath and walk up and started singing and I sang Christina's version. I got maybe six, eight bars in and he stopped and I was like, sweet Jesus, I'm fired. Oh my God. And he said, I know that you can do this. I know you can do her version. I don't want to hear her version. I want you, be you. to sing you. Just try stuff. Do anything. And I was like, really? And I was like, well, what if I mess up? He said, then you know not to do that again. Good. Words to live by. Yeah. And he said, oh, I mess up all the time. And I just figured, and I was like, dude, really? Your mess ups, people wish yeah. they could do. And so we got into this thing. And one day at rehearsal, he just started fiddling around right before the song. And I sang back to him what he played. He said, oh. And he started playing just really out stuff and I would sing it back and that became part of how we would do it in the show. Oh, cool. And we would literally be in a totally different key and he'd play stuff and we'd have this back and forth and then somehow he would just beautifully segue into the opening of that mm. friggin' Leon Russell song. Isn't it the best? Oh. I did that song with Ray Charles oh my God. on his record, yeah. Oh. It's one of those songs that you can't go wrong. No, it's like, what, again, lightning in a bottle, what was happening when he wrote that? Yeah. That song, my God. I put that up there, it's like a song for you, hallelujah, those kind of Yeah, they're iconic yeah. pieces. So, but all of that, just all these crazy, weird 
things came about. And I'm trying to think, I think through one of those things. Oh, David Page. I got called in yet again on another session because someone had heard me, I believe, with one on one of the Dave Stewart things. Got called in on a session with Bernard Fowler, who's famous for singing, who's got an amazing voice yeah. in his own right, but who's famous for singing with the Rolling Stones forever. And I come in and we're doing this duet. Keyboard players, David friggin' Page. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, okay, because it was supposed to be a little session, and I walk in. So yeah. It's like, do you know who you are? Uh, and one thing leads to another. Later on down the line, and David loved my voice. We finished that project, and then later on, uh, they're talking about someone coming in to sing with Toto, go on tour with Toto. And the initial one, there was a conflict with a Phil Collins date. So I couldn't do the initial tour. But then the next time came around and it was like, cool. And I think I had, yeah, I had some conflicts, but I was going to be able to be, be available for the tour. So I couldn't come to the earlier rehearsals. Mm -hmm. But David was like, she can do this gig, have her come in. So, and speak of, speak of the devil. Um, Joe Walsh. It was a dual bill with Joe Walsh. So my first rehearsal was the first show. Mm -hmm. Kind of like this tour. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I ended up going on and I went out, toured with them, with Toto. That's so good. Singing those freaking hits. Well, yeah. you know that. Oh, yeah, no. It would have been fun to have been done that with you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was, poof. Yeah, that, that, that's a powerful pretty, show. It's pretty incredible. And doing all of, doing all those songs. Like, I had no idea. Dumb me. I always knew that Toto played on every friggin' thing. You know, especially if it was a Michael Jackson thing. Yeah. And we were doing um, Human Nature. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, because all of you guys played on it. Had no idea. That the kid on the keyboards was the one who wrote the, yeah, the friggin' song, Steve yeah. Procaro. Yeah. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God, you wrote my favorite, favorite, favorite Michael Jackson song. And found out from him, had wonderful conversations. They're all, well, you know, they're yeah. all brilliant, like geniuses. And come to find out that even those geniuses, he was like, he said, I knew I could never be as good as Paige on piano. So he said he had to find his niche. Yeah. And that's when he really went in and got into keyboards. Yeah. And I've since done some some really cool cool stuff, some some of his own projects. No, Steve's great. Like Steve's wonderful. They were so I've had my career's been kind of crazy. I've kind of worked with a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I did oh my God, I forgot how I met. This guy, his name is Bear McCreary. And Bear, now you all probably, if you're a gamer, you've heard his music because he's done, he's won tons of awards for doing gaming music and all kinds of stuff. But I met him and I'm trying to remember how many, I'm sure it was some kind of crazy segue. Someone recommended me to him and John Chu who you might know from being the director of Crazy Rich Asians and all of those dance movies and stuff now. Yeah. I met them when they were still at USC. Wow. Wow. And John was shooting his final, like that their version of a dissertation for film. He did a, a film short called While the Kids Are Away. And it was basically all these mothers who come out and they're, you know, doing the regular things and seeing the kids off. And then yeah, one of the mothers was supposed to be like the Mi mother of Michael Jackson. And they go into all these dance moves and singing yeah. and stuff. And I was the, I wish I had been able to dance. I would have been in the film, it's, but my voice was in it. So I was the singing voice of the mother. Oh, man. And Bear did the music. He was composing major. And we were sneaking in to, nobody tell anybody. We were sneaking into USC after hours. 
to use the, use the facilities, yeah. yeah, to record stuff. And I remember recording stuff with him in the living room of his apartment, and we had to turn off all the air conditioning, and we were baking. <laughs> And we did all of this stuff and it turned out so well. And then, of course, John gets taken under the wing of Spielberg. Bear gets taken under the wing of Richard Gibbs, who at that time was doing the Battlestar Galactica, the, the reboot of yeah. all of that. And then lateraled off to Bear, who then took over all of the music from that. And now he's just an amazing composer. Yeah. Both of them have just... So I've had a chance to work with incredible people. And through Bear, I met Richard Gibb, who used to be the keyboard player for Oingo Boingo. Mm -hmm. Richard Gibb, and, and see, I love corn. See, I'm a, I'm a rock head. I love rock, alternative rock, all of that stuff. Give me Chris Cornell recordings all day. I'm yeah. Jonathan, the lead singer for corn, spoke at this one event, and he needed they needed a singer for this project they were doing. So Richard recommended me. Long story short, we shot the live recording of their latest album, Requiem, at that big church that sits right there at Franklin and Highland. Oh yeah. It was amazing. It's on YouTube. It's badass, if I must say so. Oh, that's myself. great. It is badass. So I've done that. I've, my career has been kind of crazy. I've done stuff like that. I've sung with... Heart, heart, I've sung with Heart, Stevie Wonder, um, Elton John. Uh, I did a promotional tour with Brooks and Dunn, which I love. That's cool. So Brad Paisley, Vince Gill, Travis Tripp, that's saying T-R-O-U-B-L-E, <laughs> um, Gavin DeGraw, gosh. But you spent a bunch of time in France with Johnny oh, yeah. Halliday. Johnny Halliday, singing yeah. in French. That was one, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. That man, we did three straight nights at Stade de France. 90,000 people each night sold out every night. Yeah. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Yeah, he's the biggest star. I mean, I spent a lot of years over there with Veronique Saint-Saëns, but uh, and she's like the female equivalent, except not on those kind of scale mm -hmm. of, of sales. But every time Johnny was there, because I, I had um, done Eddie, um, Oh, uh, uh, Eddie Mitchell. Eddie Mitchell. I've done three or four albums with Eddie. Mm -hmm. And then Johnny would come down and sing on them. I mean, these these people are just complete characters. But oh God, but it was God. great because you were getting featured in in his show. Oh, yeah. And that's that's so cool just to open another audience to you. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, it's it's, it's really cool. Yeah, and, I love it. And then we just finished Phil. Yeah. God, yeah. You know. Please, Phil, get well. Let's do it again. You gotta get well. Get up. Get out here, but You know, it's like, don't make us come over there. And smack you around. <laughs> I know, it's like, let me snatch you up, boy. You know you miss us. <laughs> well, it's thrilling that you're out here on Lyle's tour. You bring a lot okay. to this show every night. It's so much fun sitting back there and hearing you sing every night. It's cool. I love it. And, uh... And we're we got sound check coming up, and in oh, the yeah. and in before that, look what's going on here. Oh my stuff! She's working before we even get started with sound check. So what are you oh, doing here? Yeah. Voiceover work? I do voiceovers. Um, I do voiceover for animation, for um, like documentaries and stuff. I've been the voice of the earth and the voice of the universe for the thing, <laughs> for different things, which is cool. My favorite, though, is doing um, the cartoons and things, the little voices for oh. kids' shows, which is so fun. It's so sweet. And then I usually get a chance to also sing. The characters usually will sing as well. And so that's fun. And I did, well, you were in here, and I was just recording yeah. a voiceover for an announcement for Easter Seals. Yeah. So it's just cool. It's really varied, which is really cool. See, that's the beauty of it. It's, every day can be an adventure in this business. Yes. There's something new, different location for us every day. Mm -hmm. You never know what you're coming into at this point. And then it's like like you doing this. I'm sitting in a room with my rig doing album oh, yeah. work for people. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it's the joy of doing this. Is There's nothing 
that compares to it. At all. I literally could not do anything else. That was the thing that was nagging at me. Yeah. In when I was in school, because as much as I look, I still love science. I've still got my Gray's Anatomy books and my biochem yeah. books and all of that stuff. I still love it. But this, this is a different fills a different part of your soul. This is my, this is the air I breathe. Yeah. I couldn't do it. That's why I always, whenever I get asked to come in and talk to kids, talk to students, and I'm like, yeah, well, what do you do? Well, what? And I said, first, you have to want this more than you want to eat. Yeah. Because sometimes you might not. <laughs> but not on this tour. <laughs> no, but this, <laughs> this is true, good Lord Almighty. We, that's one thing that we don't have to worry about being fed. Yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> this yeah. is an oink fest yeah, out that's here. That's why I was on the I was on the elliptical this morning. Yeah. So it's like, oh my gosh. But you have to want this has to be the air you breathe. You have to want this to the point where it's like, you know what? If I have to do without for a minute, yeah. That's what I have to do. This is the DNA. This is everything. This is the lifeblood. Yeah, because I mean, my first gig that I got after I quit dental school was fifty dollars a night. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I yeah. loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I mean, money. I mean, you don't want to say money is like totally secondary, but well, yeah. But you know, there, there's times where people call and say they don't. I mean, I remember a funny thing. I remember this guy contacted me and he said, "Friend of mine's turning sixty or something. Lives in Pacific Palisades and." Mm -hmm you know, we'd like to just put a little thing together for his birthday, for his friends. And it was me and Vinny and Finnegan. It was a whole bunch of us. We put this band together. We'd all just come off of like Phil Collins and Sting. Nobody had any idea who we were. We were just playing top 40 in the guy's no basement. Way. And we each made like a couple of hundred bucks for the thing. And we had a ball. I love seeing yeah. stuff like that. Because you want to play. It's like yes. business. It all works. See, the, one of the things for me was when I kind of figured out that I have to amortize this gig as an annual gig and not a daily or a weekly. Because you look in your book and there's nothing and you can start going, oh, crap. You know? totally. But if at the end of the year you've paid all your bills and socked a little money away, it's a good year. It's fantastic. And it's in like a Herbie Hancock gig, as fabulous as that is, that circuit does not pay yeah. like a Phil Collins. Yeah. But guess what? Yeah. <laughs> it pays dividends. It does pay, maybe not monetarily, but in so oh, yeah. many other ways. My voice, I did not sing the same when I came off the road yeah. as when I started with him. Yeah. I sing stuff now. I go back and listen to recordings. It's like before Herbie, after Herbie. Yeah. Yeah. Totally different. It's so good. Oh my God. It was a master class every day. So stuff like that I will do. Yeah. And, and you can't put a price on that. No, no, you, no. You need just to be out there doing it. Yes. Which I, brings me to, I guess we should probably get out there and do sound check pretty yes, soon. Maybe. I think so. Since, since we are getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, Amy Keys, I love you with all my heart. I'm so thrilled that we are on the road together, and I look forward to lots more in the future. Absolutely. And thank you for doing this, because I've been being written to and harassed every day. Where the hell is Amy, other than eating dinner? Oh, uh, well, I hope, I hope this was satisfactory to you. Oh, guys. no, you're, fa you're so fabulous. So and I'm let's a hot mess right now. No, you, you, you at your worst is better than most at their best. So <laughs> now, I love you. you dearly, and let's Bye. go to work. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.